This is Carl from the OutAaven.net and it's Oz Comic Con weekend here in Melbourne and I get the privilege of speaking with Claire Kramer, which <laughs> very big fan by the way. Uh, which obviously we'll go we'll go through the usual ones I'm probably sure you've seen it heard a million times, you know, bring it on, Buffy, uh, True Calling. I actually rewatched your uh, one off with Sabrina the Teenage Witch the other day with oh my God. the <laughs> yeah where you were the the, the klepto uh, so yeah it was quite interesting to sort of go and see the different ranges that you get to do at least during that time and also doing a bit of research also finding out different things that you've done uh, especially your charity work and stuff like that and also seeing other uh, read pop events that you've done recently with the likes of the crew of Animaniacs and everything else. So I have really no idea where to begin. I would start out with the usual what got you into acting, but I'm sure you've heard that one a million times. Yeah. So I want to start out with something that I keep, I keep seeing, but I haven't found the footage of, and I'm just wondering whether you are probably the biggest master sleuth on the internet and maybe able to get this removed. But supposedly there is footage of you as the Wendy's girl. Okay, I would love it if you could find it because I don't even, I don't know. I mean, I, of course I was there when it, it, I was the Wendy's girl for a long time. So yeah, I know there's footage out there, but I have not seen any and I, much less, I haven't really even seen a picture of me as the Wendy's girl in a very long time. Um, my mom, I know had some of the articles. This was when you laminated articles. So <laughs> Some of the articles were laminated, but honestly, I would love to. If anybody has it, please send it to me on Twitter. In, indeed, like that was quite interesting to see it. And then I'm I'm searching around for it, going, okay, where is it? Because I, I would have just inserted it into the video just then if something had popped up. But it's like this is one of these almost urban legend type things. Yeah. Um, and it's funny you asked if I had, you know, covered up any of the footage. I'm proud of that. That was, I was young when I was, that was, that was a job I had when I was, you know, pretty young, 11, 12. Um, and it definitely was a good learning experience and also taught me, you know, what it took to be successful in this business to some extent. So I'm definitely, you know, I'm definitely proud of it. That's awesome. Uh, I suppose I'll... I'll have to go into the, the, the bring it on the Buffy stuff, but um, as I said, you've probably heard all a million times, probably, oh God, not this again. But um, I was sort of thinking like a, more along the lines of the, the training in the background behind it. Like you had bring it on where you obviously uh, play Courtney, the quote unquote head, you know, who cheerleader. Uh, and then you got into Buffy where you sort of, you would play Glory, which sort of had a little bit of fighting and stuff in it. Did you find sort of, how was the training between the two roles? Like you would have had to do a little bit of gymnastics and everything for Bring It On and a little bit of fight choreography for Buffy. Did you find that sort of the two were one alike or very different? Well, you kind of hit the nail on the head, you know, bring it on. We had gymnastics, cheerleading training, things like that. I remember before we started filming the movie, they took us down to San Diego and we had a month long training period where we trained with other cheerleaders. And then the evening we went to the gym and ran on a treadmill. <laughs> um, when I was doing Buffy, it was more on set training as opposed to learning stuff beforehand. So we worked with stunt choreographers and obviously our stunt doubles. Um, but we would really learn the stuff at most, maybe a day ahead of time, it's the fight stuff. You know, I know we did work on the hundredth episode a couple, like a week or two ahead. Um, but it was more in the moment, whereas bring it on was everything was sort of planned, choreographed. We had to learn it. And then we started filming. Very interesting to sort of see the two styles, but, uh, but also sort of like character wise, like I'll also move on to the, like the glory side of things. Like we Rewatching season five in preparation for this, I saw it was interesting to see your character sort of start out almost as like a, a clone of Courtney from Bring It On, very self absorbed, arrogant, you know, it's all about me, me, me. And then as the character develops later in the season, especially because you, because it, your character was a dual role, it was uh, your, yourself as Glory, and then you had the Ben character as well, and this, the two sort of end up mixing with each other over time. Uh, so how, how did you find playing that dual role, especially having to sort of do, the, I guess you might have done the old bewitched trick of, you know, ding the bell and we have to freeze and switch over characters in the shot or was it just 
sort of like green screen or something with that type of effect? Um, yes, that was. Uh, there's a lot of questions in there. Um, first, I'll talk to about the transition. Um, when we were filming, it was before total CGI, although I think they did a pretty good job making it look really, really good. Um, so I would be standing on Apple boxes because Charlie Weber was is about a foot taller than me. And so I'd be doing the scene on Apple boxes. And then literally, like you said, they'd say freeze and I'd come out after I'd said overlapped into his dialogue and then they'd bring him in. He'd start with my dialogue and then overlap into his. So that's how we would film those transitions. But, you know, as far as playing dual characters, I didn't really play them because they were two separate entities. So I just really focused on glory um, as someone, in my opinion, she was strong willed. Yes, but she wasn't a bitch. She just knew what she wanted and she wanted to go home. That's what she wanted. And I'm sorry if she had to sacrifice Buffy's little sister or anyone else or make an apocalypse for it to happen. And she just wanted to go home. Yeah. Most definitely. Uh, all right. I, I'm going to sort of ask the one, you, again, you know, as I've touched on many times, Buffy and that you, you've probably heard to death. Has there been any question that hasn't been asked that you would like to have been asked about the role of Glory at all? Or have you heard them all a million times and told them all a million times? Well, I definitely haven't heard them all a million times because, you know, fans are passionate about the show and they're passionate about the character. So they definitely, there's always a new perspective. And that's what I love about coming to things like Oz Comic Con, you know, is I will hear, you'll, uh, inevitably, I'm going to meet someone who's going to ask me something I've never heard before. Is there something I want to share about the character that I haven't shared before? I can't think of anything off the top of my head other than the fact that, you know, I just love her. I just loved playing her. The dialogue was amazing. Amazing. The wardrobe was amazing. The storyline was amazing. The show, the writers. So the, it was really just an extremely positive experience for me. Awesome. Uh, one one other thing that I, I sort of noticed so early on was I actually went and found this one, the short film of Debs. Mm -hmm. And when rewatching it, like I, I watched the short film, and then I've I've also seen the movie a couple of times as well. And I just sort of saw the same sort of style of acting that you had with, with Glory in the, uh, the Lucy character that you, you played in that. But what, I'm sure you, you, you sort of were able to sort of unleash a little bit more by looks in the short film. Was that the, the type of thing that you were able to do? Just sort of the difference between doing the small film versus the TV series? You just sort of, were you free to do your own thing, put your own spin on it, or were they very... No, we want this, this, this. Oh, if I remember correctly, and it was a very short shoot for me um, and a very, you know, a character that I played and then kind of left. Um, but if I remember correctly, no, they, they didn't really want interpretations, creative interpretations. They, they hired me because of Glory, and that's they just wanted that sort of iteration of the character put onto Lucy. Did you ever see the actual movie and what were your thought if you have have I you didn't see, it. didn't see it no didn't want to see it or just sort of I just you know I wasn't in it so <laughs> no, it's, that's fair enough uh, now I just have a, I had a look over uh, again it was going through Wikipedia and everything else trying to find what what the, like I was able to find you got a lot into charity work, uh, from from what I was able to double check on here. Uh, spokesperson for Kids for Kids, organisation pro providing financial aid and toys for kids with cancer. Uh, what's it like, sort of getting into those type of situations, and what made you get involved with it? Um, well, I am a philanthropist at heart, um, and I feel for me, I um, feel it's important to to give back to the community, to being a contributing member of society. So if I hear of an organization or an organization reaches out, um, I'm always happy to assist if I'm able to, whether that's by, you know, giving a speech or a financial monetary donation or, or helping them raise awareness through social media. So it, to me, I, I just feel that's just part of who I am. That's an important part of being a contributing member of society. Okay. And I also noticed that you did have your 
own charity. Is that still up and running? At the moment, I don't have one that's no, dedicated myself, no. Okay. So, no, all right. Uh, all right, well, last one, and we'll, we'll make this very Oz Comic Con related as well to give, give the nice cheap plug there. Uh, you've done, you're doing panel hosting this weekend. You've done panel hosting with the likes of Ming Na Wen, uh, Cast Van Maniacs, and Re David Tennant recently. Like, in amongst that bunch of people, you've got a lot of very spontaneous and very out there personalities. Uh, so, you, you've done a lot of this before. How do you keep them control? Is it bribes? Is it the mother voice or whipping a chair? Well, it's none of those things. In fact, I think what makes um, a panel experience uh, with myself unique is I don't have any, I don't have anything in my head planned. I don't have a way that I want it to go. I don't have a preconceived notions. Of course, I'll have done my research and have questions in mind. But bringing out the best in a guest is about being in the moment. And, be, and being able to pivot and, and play off of what they feel comfortable doing. Um, and if they're shy, maybe helping them emerge as a person and an artist before this group so that, so that they can really give an intimate experience to the people who've come to Oz Comic Con um, and, and sat in their panel. So to me, it's not about, you know, uh, there's no trick other than being in the moment and being prepared. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, it was short, but very informative. Yeah. And uh, once again, uh, you'll be at Oz Comic Con this weekend. We'll definitely have video of that up uh, throughout the course of the week, probably just after the event's finished. This will be going up straight away when I get home. And, uh, yeah, just thank you very much and hope you enjoy your time here with uh, Oz Comic Con. And please get out and enjoy Melbourne if you get a chance. There's some sunshine out there, I heard, for the first time in a while. And it's the middle of winter, so get out and enjoy it. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you.